What's up guys, thank you so much for stopping on by. I am Tsu. Today's featured collectible is geared towards the gamer. If you love the Witcher series as much as I do, oh man, it's one of my favorite video game series in its short lifespan, then stay tuned as we unbox, inspect, and assemble from Prime One Studios, their quarter scale figure of Ciri from the Witcher 3 video game. Now feel free to skip to the end if you just wanna see how she looks all set up. Otherwise, come along with me as I navigate us through this unboxing experience. Starting out with the box dimensions, the height is 25 inches, which is 63.5 centimeters. Width is 24 inches, which is 60.9 centimeters. And depth is 17 inches, which is 43.18 centimeters. So this is a pretty decently sized package that will definitely eat up a good amount of storage wherever you decide to put it. The box art for Siri follows suit with the other figures in this line as well. As you can see, this is a lot of styrofoam in this package, and really, it's mostly to contain the huge heavy base for Siri. This is a pretty beefy package, so it's surprising they only have one line of tape to seal the styrofoam together. Inside, the exclusive version here is made up of 11 pieces, though it only takes 10 of those to fully assemble Siri, as one of the portraits is an additional alternate display option. We'll start unpacking with the base first. As you can see, it's pretty big and it's definitely as heavy as it looks. Keep in mind that this is just an unboxing, so I'll reserve my opinions for the upcoming review, but I will say that the paint and finish I'm seeing so far is pretty underwhelming. I hope it's showing on camera well so that you guys can decide for yourselves. Everything is a bit too shiny, but definitely not in a wet look. It's just kind of plasticky. As with other figures in this line, the base is not fully environmental as the very bottom has a wooden ornate design. Below the base is plain black and has the edition numbered labeling. Next, we have the werewolf head that attaches to the base. I can say that the hair or fur on it does look better. It's got some pretty detailed lines in it. The blood almost has a wet finish. They didn't do anything to the bottom of the head, but I suppose that was to be expected. Here we have the werewolf arm, which is also a part of the base. The most standout feature of the arm are probably the claws, if I had to point something out. I hope they're showing up on camera well. This next piece we have is another part of the base. This is the branch from the tree stump that protrudes from the rear of the diorama. This is the last piece of the base, it's Ciri's Wolf Medallion. While the chains are metal, the medallion itself is not. As a matter of fact, it feels almost like it's 3D printed. Okay, so let's pull out the body here. Ciri's outfit looks fairly simple at a quick glance, but if we get closer, her design is actually quite layered. It's mostly earthy tones, but with the turquoise waistband thing there. Then you have the little details like the buttons on her leather leggings or the stitches on her belt. Those are really nice, fine details. Her boots look to be made like they're of a PVC type resin as it has more depth in its color than the rest of the body. Of the two portraits, we're gonna start with the exclusive head first. The exclusive portrait differs from the standard portrait very subtly. The exclusive head has her bang brushed to the side and most notably, she is wearing the wolf medallion. Now, if we're comparing to the other figures in this line, her hair quality here isn't the best. There are blobs of paint and the lines are not very fine. Does this look like Siri to you guys? Let me know in the comments down below. Next, we have the regular standard portrait. Notice that her hair bang is drooped down. Still, I think all these differences are too subtle to have a second portrait. Either way, this area has been the most hotly controversial subject for this figure as the face sculpt as well as its head placement differs quite a bit from the stock photos. And I'll get more into that in the full review at a later date. Now let's compare these two heads side by side. What I find interesting is that the regular portrait on the right has a more yellow skin tone compared to the left portrait, which has a slightly pinker tone. Both portraits aren't exactly the same face. It's more discernible in the chin area where the right one is sharper compared to the left one, which is more rounded. Continuing on with the last few parts of this unboxing, this next part looks to be like her dagger in its sheath. It feels like it's made of plastic. 
Next, we have the blade end of her sword. Now, this is actually metal and has a nice twang when you tap on it. Then lastly here, we have her sword sheath. We were fortunate not to have any breakages or manufacture defects, but now that we've inspected everything and emptied out the box, it's time to assemble her. As always, we start with the foundation or the base here. As I stated earlier, this thing is quite heavy. No worries about anything toppling over for sure. Let's attach the werewolf head next. It's got a square key underneath and it fits almost like a perfect puzzle piece. Next up is what we can assume to be his newly detached arm. Man, he really had no chance against Siri, did he? This also attaches via a square key. Siri's body is the next to go on. She only has one key peg under her right leg as her left leg just freely supports the rest of her stance. This is the last remaining limb of the tree stump behind Siri. It feels like it might be held on magnetically. I could be wrong though. The portrait has to go on at an angle, sliding in towards the right shoulder area first, then gently lay the rest down inside. This has an exposed magnet underneath. We have the blade end of her sword here, which drastically increases the height of the overall figure. Also, this blade keys in a very specific orientation as it cannot even be placed 180 degrees from this. Her sword sheath here goes in her back with just a peg. The peg goes in horizontally, no magnets to keep it attached. Her dagger is pretty much the same story, no magnet, just a peg, but at least it inserts a bit downward. Lastly, we have her medallion. It attaches magnetically while the chain hooks onto the anchors at the bottom of the base. The 10 pieces it took to assemble her wasn't the most overly complicated process, fortunately. But now that she's all put together, let's sit back and see how she looks all set up. So that's another unboxing wrapped up. Thank you guys so much for stopping on by and unboxing that figure with me. Now, if you guys are interested in the full review where I get into all the details and intricacies, and believe me, I've got a laundry list and a lot of emotions aimed at that figure. Stay tuned for that review coming at a later date. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, and comment down below if you have any questions, thoughts, or opinions. Until next time, don't worry what others think, collect the things that you love, and I'll see you in the next upload. Take care, guys. So between the books, the video game, and the Netflix series, those three definitely had their own vibe, like they had their own style and way of telling the story. I would say the Netflix series with its like jumping back through and forth the timeline, that didn't really do it too much for me. Only because HBO's Westworld, when you do it that way, without giving too much, that was masterful storytelling. Like, So definitely check out Westworld if you haven't seen that already. Up to season two.